In the news currently and for the past year or so, you've likely been watching the sad and rapid destruction of Venezuela. In this video, I want to explore the economic policies that have led to this sorry state of affairs. I'm mainly going to concentrate on the policies enacted by Hugo Chavez, who was the president between 1998 and 2013. But we need to start the story a little earlier than that to get a fuller picture. In 1959, Venezuela elected a broadly socialist president called Romulo Betancourt. Although he did not do anything too drastic beyond tripling the income tax rate and devaluing the currency, he did, through the establishment of the Venezuelan constitution, set the groundwork for a more activist state than the country had seen up until this point. That potential would be realized a decade later when Carlos Andes Perez came to power and nationalized the petroleum sector, establishing the PDVSA and a welfare state funded by deficit spending. Perez would establish a pattern that would become familiar from here on in Venezuela, using oil money to pay for various social welfare schemes. This naturally concentrated a lot of power in the oil industry, which effectively politicized the PDVSA forever, leaving it ripe for corruption and rampant cronyism. The next president, Luis Herrera Campins, instituted currency exchange controls which included wide-ranging domestic price controls in a bid to curb rising prices. But falling oil prices kept devaluing the Bolivar in the 1980s and left Venezuela in economic crisis. Things would come to a head under the next president, Jamie Luchini, as many corruption scandals involving the Venezuelan ruling class were exposed. This gave rise to socialist populism in the country, led by agitators such as Hugo Chavez, a dissident colonel in the army. In 1989, Perez was brought back to institute a series of IMF reforms to try to get spending under control and to liberalize the country's economy. However, such was the institutional corruption in the country, especially uh, that PDVSA to social program pipeline, that Perez did not really get a lot done. Although his second presidency was rocked by a coup attempt in 1992 by none other than Hugo Chavez, and he was eventually impeached for corruption. Things bumbled on for the next few years until in 1998, riding the wave of socialist populism from discontented poor workers, Chavez became the president. And this is where the interventionist economic policies really start ramping up. Immediately, Chavez set about establishing worker-owned cooperatives. There were over 100,000 of these established, comprising around 1.5 million workers. To give you an idea of what that means, in 1998, the population of Venezuela was 23.41 million people. So, the cooperatives accounted for around 6.6% of people. By 2007, around 30% of state funds were controlled by these communal councils. They had established over 300 communal banks, which were mandated to give microloans to these cooperatives when they needed them. In fact, around 3% of reserves had to be maintained just for these loans. And to help pay for all this, Chavez also increased the income tax uh, rate to 61.7%. So, how did these cooperatives work out? Well, despite praise from the UN and various other leftist groups, including a project strangely in the Bronx in New York, the cooperatives did not function as hoped. A census in 2006 showed that as many as 50% of the cooperatives were either functioning improperly or were frequently 
created just to gain access to public funds. In other words, state subsidies for worker cooperatives create strong incentives for corruption. The next major Chavez policy was his hydrocarbon laws. These were intended to stamp out any lingering vestiges of private enterprise in Venezuela's oil industry and mandated that at least 51% of the PDVSA had to be owned directly by the government. In practice, this meant that oil experts were replaced by Chavez cronies. For example, in 2002, he installed this chap, Gaston Para Luzardo, as the president of the PDVSA. Luzardo was a leftist economics professor who knew absolutely nothing about how to run oil facilities. He was, simply put, a fiercely idealistic opponent of private industry, and he went on to replace most of the PDVSA management with other socialist lackeys. Chavez also increased foreign cooperation repatriation of oil revenues from 16.7% to 30%. Of the $15 billion being generated by the PDVSA, Chavez diverted around $4 billion to pay for various socialist schemes he called Bolivarian missions. In fact, the Chavez formula was uh, pretty simple. Expropriate oil money for Bolivarian missions in exchange for votes in elections so he could continue to claim that Venezuela was an example of democratic socialism as opposed to Soviet-style dictatorship. And for what it's worth, at least this part of things worked, as Chavez did keep winning the majority of votes in elections. And what were the effects of these oil policies? Well, for one, it increased the dependency of Venezuelan exports on oil from 77% when he took power to 89% by 2006 and 95% by 2012. In the vernacular, you might call this putting all your eggs in one basket. And of course, this made the Venezuelan economy even more fragile than it had been in the 1980s because now price shocks could cause real devastation. And in 2008, when the financial crisis hit, oil prices fell from $129 a barrel to $43 a barrel. So if you get a 66% price drop in a product on which your economy depends for over 90% of its export income, you don't need a PhD in economics to figure out it's not good news. However, Venezuela would not have been as vulnerable as this had it not been for several other measures that Chavez took. In 2003, he instituted price controls on food, and in 2005, he started wide-scale land redistributions in earnest. Now, let me look at these policies and their effects more closely. Chavez set strict price controls across a whole range of basic foods. This led food producers, who did not want to sell below cost, to try to smuggle their goods to foreign markets. Chavez put an end to this by seizing over 750 tons of food at the border. He punished firms who failed to comply with the price controls by nationalizing large farms and supermarkets, stating, the land is not private, it is the property of the state. He set minimum production quotas on 12 basic food items. In addition, he redistributed 2.7 million hectares of land from private owners to 180,000 landless peasants. He decriminalized the peasant occupation of idle private land and increased agricultural credit, essentially government farm subsidies, from $168 million in 1998 to $7.6 billion in 2008. So, what happened? Well, the state-owned supermarkets known as Macal's were forced to sell food at 39% below market rates. Naturally, this led to huge queues and shortages, as such measures always do. Of course, this was compounded by state inefficiency. For example, in 2010, over 120,000 tons of food laid rotting in the nationalized port at 
Puerto Cabello. Because of all of this, food imports increased by around six times in this period, increasing to $7.5 billion and accounting for around 70% of all food. And to give some context, before Chavez came to power, Venezuela produced 70% of its own food. One reason for this drastic change is that Chavez's policies led to a drastic reduction in food output. Between 1998 and 2014, food production decreased 75% for beef and veal, 40.3% for maize, 38.9% for rice, 33.6% for sugar, 46.5% for coffee, 63.5% for potatoes, 31% for tomatoes, 24.6% for onions. Uh, and, and astonishingly, uh, while all of this was going on, the UN was actually praising Chavez's uh, policy. They were praising him for reducing poverty. On top of all of this, Chavez nationalized whole swathes of the rest of the economy. Cement production, electricity, telephones, steel. All of these industries experienced a decline in production output or operational efficiency. And from 2013 onwards, the power grid started to experience nationwide brownouts. And remarkably, despite all of these facts, as late as 2017, leftists such as Slavoj Žižek were saying that the real problem in Venezuela is that Chavez had not gone far enough. Because, you know... Real socialism has never been tried. Since Chavez, under his successor, Nicolas Maduro, things have just gone from bad to worse. And now the regime is on the cusp of being overthrown. Now, I will let you decide whether or not this was real socialism. But the point is, no matter what you call it, nationalization, price controls, massive deficit spending on out-of-control welfareism and social schemes, and the failure to protect basic property rights lead to catastrophic outcomes wherever they have been tried. Don't let people fool you into doing these things to your own country. Now get out. And a very special thanks to Sir Percy Blakeney, the Crimson Satyr, the Ambivalent Onion, Andy Swainson, Bailey Inarora, David Vacherche, Christopher Scholholm, Natural Rights, Binary Surfer, Holy Spatula, Hornito Jones, Kazga, Michael Tynan, Time Stealer, Toyo Tommy Ami, Tragic Vision, William Angus, Blake Barrows, and Edward Darrow.